Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to make a quick video uh, about something that uh, I see questions about every year on Facebook, usually when it starts warming up or when it starts cooling down in the fall. And that is, how do I not idle my truck? Or how do you guys cool your truck in the summertime or heat it in the wintertime? So I'm just gonna make a quick video here showing uh, my setup on my uh, sleeper and uh, it's time to put my air back in it's gotten warm so I'm gonna put that back in I've had it out um, for the winter season um, real quick just in the winter time what do I use this right here it's a small ceramic heater picked it up at Walmart I'm sure probably less than 40 bucks I don't even see a name on it but it's got a thermostat and that's the key thing I really like about it there it is right there I'll leave that on there so you guys can google it if you want to um, and then there's some other key things that I do to this truck though to to really help in the winter and summer and I'm going to cover that as I uh, as I put this in I've been using this technique now for a good year plus and this is a 2020 Ram uh, let me see here if I can get the idle hours Let's see, so my total hours on this truck, 24, 10, 263 idle. So one other thing I wanted to talk about real quick that I think is really key to being able to use this kind of a setup is that insulated material. This is that cellophane bubble wrap. You can get it at any hardware store. Uh, I think I picked mine up at Lowe's. Got it taped up, I put it over that. I've got this big one that covers the windshield. By putting those in, um, they actually really uh, make this work. I've had nights in the wintertime where I'll have actual ice on the inside of my glass um, in my truck with that little ceramic heater. And this stuff just puts that little insulation barrier where it'll be pretty toasty warm in here. It's not bad at all. Um, so I think that's key. And I think a roll of that stuff's like 25 or 35 bucks. This forward. And so, so my back platform, when I built it, I'm fairly tall, so I needed to stretch out. So I built this extra, and I'll, I'll do a separate video on my sleeper and the build of this. If you guys want to see it, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, this is gonna cover heat and air. But this air conditioner, I've got this hole cut right in the corner of this platform. Got my electric right here. Um, got a small set of lights there that plugs in as well. Um, this one actually goes to my block heater um, in my engine. Uh, it gets down there pretty cold. You wanna plug that truck in. Sometimes I, I only set it up to to run that heater for an hour and a half, two hours. I actually have a small timer that I can plug onto that and program it to kick on at a certain hour. So real quick, um, I'll talk about this air conditioning unit. Uh, I uncovered the label here. Give you guys a shot of that. So you can see all the data on it, 8,000 BTU, 850 watt air conditioner, okay? So I'm running a 2,000 watt champion um, generator. Been running it for a year now. It will run this seven, eight hours min. I usually set my thermostat on about 72 degrees. This is where I sleep and it works good. Um, I put these little heat shields on just simply because this portion of it kind of warms up a little bit. And then that actually connects to this. Real quick. The pipe's inside, I wrap this with that same bubble wrap. That pipe gets warm, because that's exhausting it out, okay? And then this is just one of those flapper gate exhaust um, covers for like an air conditioner. I actually built a homemade camper once and got the same setup, and you've used the same air conditioner in that small camper. Works great. This actually goes in the rear sliding window. So that's another thing that's key for my setup. Um, sliding rear glass, I uh, have to have it to make it work.
So one of the modifications I made, um, I don't know if you can see down in there, this air conditioner comes with a piece of this vent hose for that exhaust. It's kind of that dryer vent looking stuff. I believe that's six inch. It wasn't quite long enough to stretch out and do what I wanted to do comfortably. So I went and bought a piece of this aluminum. Um, it's fairly rigid and got it bent just like I want it and attached on there. And then of course insulated it off to keep the heat going out the vent instead of um, hanging out in the cab with me. So one thing I'll show you that kind of a gray, um, it's kind of a door jam seal. I've got it in there and then I've got it on the insides of that where it fits up against there and kind of seals that off. But then I actually jump out and throw some of this uh, black Gorilla tape around it for the season. It just kind of helps make sure there's no water or anything. It gets in there and I ran this set up all last year and never had one leak and got rained on a few times. All right, and there's the outside of the vent sealed off, guys. So one thing you will probably need to do is get you some duct tape. And when I put this in, I just seal it around there, feel for air, get it sealed off real good and tight. And uh, it's ready to fire up and go. So again, here's my Champion inverter generator. I keep it locked in here with a cable so it uh, doesn't walk off on me. Um, got a strap around there to keep it secure. <clears throat> One thing I'll say is you do want to run these outside of the vehicle. You want to follow the manufacturer's instructions on what co whatever kind of inverter generator you get. Just make sure you follow that. Um, if I had to do it over again, I might go with a uh, 2500 watt. But the reason I picked this one, it was the lightest one in class um, at the time I bought it. I think it came in at under 50 pounds with no fuel on board. And I'll show you here my cord that I plug in. Just got it wrapped up here. A little wire clip that holds it. Pull it out. And you can kind of see this follows along the bed, goes up over the cab. And that's one thing I hadn't covered yet. Uh, both the, this cord and the cord for my block heater um, come out underneath the truck and then they're zip tied in. There's some small rubber plugs in the floor pans of these trucks. And basically I've got them running up in under here, down through there and I cut a little slot in there and I cocked them back on the inside and then taped them off real good so you can see here they're coming out this is the one going to the back and of course that's the one zip tied that stays plugged into the block heater okay let's see if this thing will light here fuel on <clears throat> switch on choke and usually one good tug gets it These generators are really quiet. Um, you can find tests on them if you're looking for the super quiet one. Plug um, this in. There we go. 
Let's check this out. So it's on, looks like the temperature in here is about 70. Then we got the power, we're gonna go there's fan. Generator inverter kick on mode, cool. I want you guys to be able to hear this. Take her down to about 65. Listen for the inverter to kick in. And there, my compressor kicked on. So my exhaust is coming out, moving that. towards the window when I put that in because there is so much air moving in here it's insane there it is guys so hopefully this video will uh, help somebody out there if you got some value out of it give it a thumbs up or a like and uh, feel free to share it guys Good luck.